thank you for your people that have come to this place to get more of you. I pray, God, that you to have your way in us and that you allow this word to fall on good ground. Do what only you can do, God. Transform the hearts and the minds of your people that they would be free to receive from you in abundance. I bind the devil that will try to distract, deceive, and destroy what your plans are for our life. Let no person lead the way that they came. Let them hear this word of truth. Let them hear and understand what you're doing. Let them understand clearly the next move they need to make to receive from you and produce your glory in the earth. Father, every chain that hinders your growth in our life, <clears throat> we want it broken. Every habit, every addiction that hinders you from manifesting yourself in our life, we want ourselves free from it. Have your way, O oh God. We'll forever give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Put your Bibles in your hand. Make this bold and powerful declaration, if you will. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the word of faith. I will hear, understand, and do the word of faith. I have a master anointed to teach me the word of faith. I will follow my master as my master follows Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Bless God. God is good and He's worthy to be praised. Amen. You will not leave the way you came this day. Amen. Amen. We're going to stop just talking about faith and we got to walk this thing out. Right. Amen. Live this thing out in our life. If we're going to see the manifestation of God, you got to stop acting like you're looking for Him to show up. Start acting like He showed up already. Right. All right. You're the one that's behind on time, Amen. not God. Amen. You're not waiting on God, God's waiting on you. Yes. So you're not going to leave here the way that you came. Yes. You're going to be strengthened and empowered. We thank God for all those online members that are listening and tuning in. We know that the word is going to be a blessing to you. Amen. It's going to change and transform your life. I'm going to talk about the difference when it comes to your relationship with God. The difference between love and lust. Right. Love and lust. And oftentimes when we hear the word lust, we immediately think, of uh, sexual attraction and desires. <clears throat> but lust goes far beyond that. Amen. And your flesh lusts for the things that pleases itself. But the flesh is an enemy against God. Say that again. Amen. There's nothing your flesh is ever going to crave that's pleasing God. It's your spirit that crave the things of God that make you want things from God. You understand? Amen. It's not your flesh. Your flesh only wants what pleases itself. Right? And we have to be able to decipher the difference because where you stand with God means everything. I don't want you expecting a bus to show up where the bus is never running. Oh, Jesus, come on. And you're in the bus stop and you're decreeing and declaring this bus is coming and it's going to take you where you need to go, but the bus don't run down this boulevard. So you're standing faithfully. But it still ain't going to never come. And that's what's happening in your relationship with God. You're expecting God, but you're in a place God don't run down that boulevard. Come on now. Yeah. Understand that? Yeah. You can't obey God only when you can connect the dots. You obey God every time you hear Him. Yeah. Ooh, Jesus. Amen. I don't need to be able to connect the dots. Like You want what God tell me got to connect with what the problem is I'm going through. Right. That's not how we serve God. Right. We serve God, we hear and we obey. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody say, I hear, I hear. and I obey. I obey. This calls you to walk in the supernatural things of God right. when you can hear and obey. Yeah. Yeah. If you've got to connect the dots, you'll only obey what benefits you. Right. Somebody say, you talking about lust now? <laughs> when you will only obey God for what benefits you, you're living in lust, not in love. Come on. Are you hearing me? Yeah. You got to do more than just please your flesh. Amen. Right. And because we have grown so much of pleasing the flesh, whether it's through pleasing other people, other family members, we've gotten in a place that we want God to accommodate our pursuit of lustful things. Right. Come on. Yeah, I want what I want, and I don't care that the, benefit, the kingdom don't benefit. That's lust. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. That's lust. I want what I want. When I want it, and it don't bother me that the kingdom don't benefit. That's lust. And we got to move from a stage of lust to a stage of love if we're going to see God show up in the earth. The devil is winning because you're not going through boot camp properly. The devil is winning because, they, listen, you think because you get a bunch of people to pat you on your back, you're doing all right. Can I tell you something I love saying?
saying this, and it, 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 it always uproot and plant good seed at the same time. Good singing ain't got nothing to do with, with worship. Amen. Come on. That's true. Do you hear me? Amen. Now, we as people want somebody with the mic that can say. <laughs> Come on, that don't make no sense to lie. We don't want nobody up here breaking up stuff. You understand? <laughs> but, but, but good singing has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with worship. Amen. Right. Do you hear me? Amen. Worship don't come from vocal skills. Y'all be saying that. Come on. Amen. Come on. Vocal come from my, my relationship and my heart connection with God. Amen. Jesus, yes. you're the center of my job. Ain't got nothing to do with whether anybody about my record. Yes. But everything to do with if you don't come see about me, I'm going to feel lost and in despair. Oh, yes. But you got to understand good singing has nothing to do with worship. And now that alone introduces us to lust. We always want to please people. We always want to please ourselves. We're never really concerned about pleasing God. Come on now. Come on. You, you know it got so bad now in the church that when we when we act humane toward others, we think we acting like Christians. Mm. Right. Jesus. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Just just being what, what, what makes you think you deserve something because you say hello? Right. Mm. What makes you think you deserve something because you ain't robbing nobody? Right. What makes you think you deserve something because you stop lying? Right. <laughs> what makes you think you deserve something because you... I ain't going to say that. But you can't... Just because you stop being promiscuous. Come on, get better. Come on. <laughs> you understand? Don't think you automatically qualify. You ain't supposed to be these things. Right. I stop drinking. I stop smoking. I'm looking for the Lord. You ain't supposed to be tearing up your body anyway. Right. 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 Amen. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Listen. If you start trying to demote God, He can't be God. Amen. Come on. You keep reducing Him to, to, to what you want and how you want it. He can't be God no more. That's true. And this is why it looked like the devil is winning. The, you know, St. Jude. Now, this when I make this statement, you, it, you can't receive it unless your faith is there. Now, you receive it because you know it's the spiritually right thing to think and say. We serve a God that that same Jew would be empty, right? Be a desert. Listen here, listen. Boy, I'm telling you, it don't sound it don't sound right, but it sound real good in hell. Man, I speak layoffs in St. Jew. Ain't no need for all these dead nurses. Amen. Ain't no need. That's the only we got a doctor on call. You part time, brother. <laughs> Sister, you, you part-time. I know you got skills, but you ain't no need. Listen, I, I, I come against the, the influx and, in, and growth in hospital beds being filled. Right. I mean, I let them all be empty. I don't care. This, yeah. this is the God we serve. Yes. Right. But we can't talk that. But we can't confess a house. Mm -hmm. I saw this house in Voorhees. I believe God. But did you believe God that St. Jude going to be empty? Right. But that ain't got nothing to do with me. Right. In my chair time. Amen. So, I want you to get this, all right? God commands. When God gives a command, there is no force. The Holy Ghost is not going to make you do anything. When God gives a command, there is no force to make you obey Him. It's just you. Right. See, the love of God is not manifested because you are doing right. When the sight begins, you're doing right. Amen. Amen. That devil won't tell you stay where you're at. Don't talk like that. Don't act like that. Don't think like that until you want hunger. Yeah. Until you haven't committed that sin in a long time. Then you can talk like the devil is a liar. Yeah. When I start fighting, I prove whose side I'm on. Yes. Yes. Amen. The fight tells me I belong to God. Amen. The fight tells me I don't want nothing to do with you, devil. Do you hear me? So the devil wants to keep you quiet until you, he deem you want hunger. Oh, yeah, you ain't, you ain't did that in a long time. Tell you. You know what? You did it. No, 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 no. I was the living when I started fighting. Yeah. Come on, you hear me? Yeah. See, the moment you start acting like God done showed up in your life, talking like God showed up in your life, guess what's going to happen? Things going to manifest just like God is there. Amen. Amen. So, so when God gives a command, it becomes my fight. The fight, the moment I start fighting, I become the righteousness of God. The moment I start doing what God tell me to do, at that time I qualify for whatever's on this level. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. 
Listen, when you go when you go and buy a car, the first thing they be talking about when you go talk to the money man or money woman, they say, where do you want your payments to be? And then you, you start talking about, so I need about $150 a month. And they say, okay, you got to go across the street. You got to go across the street. And uh, them cars dead, and you just got to get an engine to put in it, and you'll be good to go. <laughs> right? Right? You got to stay on your level. When you start obeying and doing what God tells you to do, Everything on that level. The moment you start fighting and resisting the devil, the fight comes because you're submitting to God. Right, right, right. Yeah. Now, I need, I need, uh, see, the devil keep making you think you ain't like other people. And then, then he keep you quiet. There's so much power in your mouth, so much anointing that you pack, yeah. but you won't let it out because the devil told you you ain't all that just yet. Yeah. And you just cussed that sister out right there. So don't, don't be talk, talking about no great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. No, 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 no. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Because the flesh conforms to certain things, they say you do anything for 21 days, it becomes a habit. Are you listening to me? So just because the flesh is acting like the flesh, it don't change who I am in the spirit. Come on, man. That don't mean you go intentionally with a heartfelt ambition mm -hmm. to do what pleases to the flesh. But don't allow them because some old stigma from who you was pop up every now and then, make you be quiet on who God made you today. Yes. Right. Some of y'all are as close to God today than you've ever been. Amen. And you still got a mindset like you ain't grown. Walk with boldness. Talk with boldness. Yes. Speak over your kids, Lord. But it's what I ain't gonna say that no my children because you know I, I got, you know, me and Jerome still, you know, we a little tangled up still, you know. So once I get rid of Jerome, maybe the devil will kill your kids by the time you get rid of Jerome. On, ain't nobody here named Jerome, you? <laughs> <laughs> you got a man named Jerome, so man. That might be all <laughs> no, 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 listen to me, listen to me. Here's what, here's what you don't understand. Anything that God showed me that, that the devil is in, I'm going to start talking against it. I'm not going to sit dormant until it gets better. Right. I'm going to make it better. Right. That's right. Now I'm about to say something else. Shake your house. I've been praying for, for all of our children and people uh, online, everybody. When, when our children are born mm -hmm. with a certain disability mm -hmm. where something is preventing them, listen to me, we ain't going to medicate that devil. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Now I'm about to say something to parents. Now you've got to receive this in your spirit. Neither are you going to keep letting them act like they got what the doctor said. Right. Come on now. Come on now. Do you hear me? Yeah. No, you're not doing that no more. I don't, I don't, I don't. See, the more you conform to the doctor right. and what he told you, right. don't look for God. Right. He's hyper and uh, he's it, messing up with his, intent, his uh, attention span and, and uh, he said, what? Oh, no, no, that's all right. We got a home remedy. My grandma uh, got, got a remedy that she taught me and my mother and my mother taught it to me. I'm going to teach it to my child. Don't worry about it. They're going to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Some of y'all some of y'all on time out. But the Bible never said put your child on time out. Thank you. And you spoil the child. He said spell her off. Right. <laughs> now I'm not telling you beat your child to death. I elbowed my child to the dog. Pastor told me. So I, did, I, I elbowed him. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, Come on. I was talking to an old associate of mine. I mean no disrespect by not calling him friends. We're really not friends, but I love him. He's a good guy. And uh, we went to the house together in Brooklyn. And uh, he said to me, I know exactly what he was talking about. He said, I, got, I think he's got two or three boys. He said, every time we would go out to eat, people would come to our table and compliment my wife and I on how good our children are. Mm -hmm. I said, brother, my wife and I experienced the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. We were sitting in a restaurant with three kids. I wish they would climb on the back. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. They got other kids, they be pulling people hair out of stuff this time. Mm -hmm. And you know some people on that. Some of y'all pay some money for that hair. And that kid get grabbed and run around the restaurant with it. And so, yes, that, well, we would go in the stores and be like, oh my God, your children are so well behaved. What they were supposed to be? Right. We was at one time in one store, this lady couldn't even find her kid. I didn't take her no mind. And she was like, yeah, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? And his, he come jumping out there. I moved his shirt. He jumped out from the cold. Ah! Boy, I said, shh. Pow! Ah! Man, a man your son sleep over there. I mean, the kids are tapping the stove and all that stuff. You 
you have to some people can't take their kids to the buffet. Them kids will bite something and put it back. Let me right. get off your kids. I see you. Keep talking about my baby. I'll, I'll go get my two dollars back. That's why we take the offer up and get it out the way. That's it. So y'all can't. He can't get that back. Go to Romans 12 and 1. Somebody say, my life will never be the same. My life will never be the same. The more the world I get out of you, the more you will walk in joy, peace, and happiness. Stop letting the devil frustrate you because you don't have what the world told you is success. Right. The average Christian cannot define success without using something materialistic. What do you call for say, Well, I think if you have your own place and you have a nice car and a little retirement account, a little money, a little vacation, a little, you know, it's like we missed it totally. Right. Like you need a place to stay. But that shouldn't be the first thing coming to my mind. Right. Now I'm thankful for a place to stay. Amen. But at the same time, you need to value your peace. That's right. You need to value that I'm not, I'm not depressed. Nice. I'm not suicidal. Amen. You know, suicidal thoughts is nothing but the devil talking to somebody. No, y'all call it, but now you don't know what you're talking about. Because my cousin committed suicide, and I know my cousin committed suicide. And I, there was nothing but the, who do you think gave him no suggestion? Right. Who do you think kept putting his problems, her problems, in front of her and telling her it ain't worth it? Right. Come on now. Suicide, suicidal thoughts, suicidal ideas, suggestions. There's nothing but the devil talking. That's, it. That's, it. That's why we got to walk in power. Amen. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. When you walk in power, that's just like the police, the good ones. The police walking on the scene and an illegal transaction is taking place. They shut that down. Right, right. Shut that down. You know, you know, when I was, uh, I never sold drugs. That wasn't something I did. I was a holy man. I only sold guns. And uh, <laughs> and I, I, uh, I never sold drugs. But they would have lookout people all on the corners. Right? And uh, it was so amazing. I don't forget my stepfather was barbershop. It was this guy. I don't even remember his name. But he was big in the drug game. And um, he was big enough that he was dating a, an Olympian. All right, this young lady was running in the Olympics. And uh, so he was doing heavy transactions and stuff. Now, this is what happened. A friend of his had uh, a moped, but he was on the moped. The moped probably wasn't registered and none of that stuff. But the man had warrants on him, right? So what, what, when he, he had the moped, and uh, I don't know if it was stolen or what it was or what the deal was, the, the officers went to go arrest him. He took off running. Now keep in mind, my stepfather is shaving this guy. He's in his chair. And this is what happened. He gets up. He said, George, hold up a minute. Let me get this square away. He went outside. Somebody whispered it in his ear. <clears throat> he dispatched, this is the God's honest truth. He dispatched people all the way down to, we was on Nostra between Quincy and Lexington. He dispatched people on Lexington, even on Green. He dispatched people all over, right? And he told them, take the bike, get the bike, take it around. Now all these people come now the guy took a run. They chasing the guy. He now does away with the body. It was so organized. It was so like, I mean, I never seen nobody had that much power. When the police came up to get the bike, they said, Well, where the bike at? Well, you know ain't nobody gonna say that. You know, ain't nobody about to say, Oh, I know, I know, I know. Right. So you hear the bike them. Now here's what you gotta understand. There are so many things the devil will make appealing to you. Mm -hmm. Poor, ain't got nothing. Now you see somebody with something, and authority, and moving like, like he's some big gangster to evade the police. I mean, it was so amazing how organized this thing, how quick he was thinking. We don't want to see nothing the devil is doing right. and get envious of it. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Let her whatever she doing to get what she got, don't you ever be envious of Don't ever get envious of something somebody is doing. I was talking to someone and uh, and I was I was we were talking history and we was having a, 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 I thought was a fair discussion. I was talking about black history. He was talking about uh, European you know Europeans, whites and different things. And he said, but think about it. If what you're saying is true. 
if if black people uh, DNA of black people are set over seven million years old and ours is only forty five thousand years, he said, look how far we advanced in such a short amount of time. That tells you that there's something different. I said, tell me how you got it. Right. right. Now that's not a racist statement. But if as Christians we got to be able to call a spade a spade, right. tell me how you got it. Because if you cannot tell the truth about how you got it, they say that's not right. Right. You're, right is not right because you benefit. That's right. Come wrong on. is not wrong because you benefit. That's right is right, wrong is wrong, period. Right. That's right. Are you listening to me? Amen. It don't matter how I benefit. Romans 12 and 1. I'm going to show you some stuff here. Y'all started my clock early. Y'all started before I even got up. So I'm going to take my extra 20 minutes. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Now, here's something you got to say. I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. That you, listen, uh, th that you, that you, um, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God. Now, here's the thing. I'm coming to you by the mercies of God. I, am, I have experienced something that I, the only reason I can talk to you is because I have now been where you are. And because of God's grace, I'm able to tell you the truth. Amen. All right? So I'm begging you by the mercies of God. All right? I'm standing in his mercies that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Come on. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that he may, be, that he may prove what is that good, and accept, acceptable and perfect will of God. Come on, glory and fire. For I say, through the grace given unto me, that every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Come on. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, come on, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and every one member one of another. Now, what is all that from verse 3 to 5? What is he saying? He's simply saying, stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. Know what you're called to do and do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. You may not be the one to get a private jet. You may not be the one uh, to, 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 to drive a fancy car. You've got to be comfortable. You've got to be content in where God called you. You are going to be effective if you work where God called you. Yes. You cannot yes. crave something somebody else got if it has nothing to do with your calling. Yes. Yes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness. What does it mean to seek his righteousness? To be right with God. Right. I seek God in everything I desire, everything I do. I seek God. Amen. Because when God speaks and I obey, that makes me the righteousness of God. Amen. Come on. See, he first came to God his righteousness and all the things he added to you. So the moment things go in front of your calling, you messed up with God. The moment the house, the car, the man, the woman go before your calling, you messed up with God. Never put, as my mama would say, the cop before the horse. you got to know what you're called to do. you got to work that thing out in your life. you got to stay focused on what God told. Don't worry about what somebody else got. It's all right to like some stuff, right. but don't ever allow it to get you off course. Right. 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 You know, uh, I, there was something she she said she she said this uh, uh, about a week or two ago, but she said it some months ago, and that thing registered in my spirit. And uh, so Sister Sims was praying, and she said, "You have our undivided attention." Now here's the thing: to for God to have our undivided. Now first off, when, when you some things we pray. It's not so much a request, but a declaration. Because we got to call things that are not right. as though they were. Right. For God to have our undivided attention, there's absolutely nothing God can't do through you. Right. Amen. Undivided means I'm putting my phone down. Right. Come on. Right. Now you can't tell God he got your undivided attention. And you got to go to Facebook while I'm preaching. Come on. Right. You can't say God got your undivided attention and you texting each other while I'm preaching. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. See, when God has your undivided attention, I need to hear from you. Amen. Nothing else. I don't want no distractions. I don't want nobody telling me no jokes. I don't want nobody saying nothing to me. God, I need to hear from you. We need a word from you, Lord. So we get to the place 
that when we give God our undivided attention, we are not only ready to hear, we're ready to do. Amen. Amen. If you allow the devil to keep distracting you with something you have no business with, it's okay for your flesh to like it, but don't you go after it. Come on now. Mm -hmm. unless, listen, uh, unless you know you have done what God told you to do and God gave it to you. Now that's hard for Christians to follow because these, these prosperity preachers got us going after stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't look at nothing I got and say, you know, you, you're trying to keep this. No, 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 don't let the devil talk to you. Don't let him talk to you. When God's going to do something in your life, all he needs you to do is put it in first. Amen. Amen. That's all. Amen. Trust me. The house you want, don't compare to the house that God will give you. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hey, come on. The neighborhood you want to live in, it don't compare to the neighborhood God put you in. I'm, I'm telling you that. Did right. you hear it? God's not looking for you just to do well. He's looking for you to be glorious. Amen. Yes. Now we have we have demoted God's authority in our life based on what we got. We get a house, then we, we, we think we saw. Don't have a, a job we think is it, going to be around for a while. Amen. Child, we put God so far in the background, he'll fall off the stove. <laughs> you cannot allow materialism to make you back up. See, the thing is, when you only go to God for stuff, you're back away from God when you get it. Mm -hmm. right. If you think the devil won't give you a nice car to get you to stop coming to church, he will. Mm -hmm. I told y'all the devil ain't concerned about what you're doing and where you're at. He's concerned about where you're going. Right. Go back to verse number one. I'm going to break this down to you. I want you to see some stuff here. So he's begging you that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. There, there, God don't need you to kill nothing for him. All right? He needs you now breathing and living so you can be a testimony on how good he is. Yes. Whatever you're going through, God is preparing a testimony through your life. Amen. Do you hear it? Yes. Your testimony is going to be the, the, the lifeline to someone else. Amen. Amen. You don't listen to me. Now, everybody's on a different level. Some of y'all got help from everywhere. You can call your mama, your sisters, your aunties. They're going to give you money. They're going to babysit. They're going to do all that stuff. Some of us ain't got nobody but God. Right. Well, that's totally different. That's totally different. That's totally different. All right? How are you going to go to help to the people that's asking to borrow money from you? Right, right. You said I'm a little behind. He said, what? Yeah. I don't understand why you come here talking Chinese. You know I don't speak that language. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? I'm saying I need to borrow a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I see your mouth moving, but I don't hear nothing you say. <laughs> you listen to me. Some of y'all is the one everybody go to. Right. Who you going to go to? Child, they don't care nothing about your bills to do. Now I need $20. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I need this money because I got to buy my baby something. I'll get it back to you. They know they're lying. Mm -hmm. Let me get off page. You're going to stop talking about my sister. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Materialism has nothing to do with the acceptability of God. That's right. That's holy and acceptable unto God, which you are indebted to already. Yeah. Your reasonable service. Right. You ought to do this. When something is acceptable to God, God, God never asks how much it costs. That's right. That's right. He said, we're going to dance, we're going to praise God, we're going to glorify God. God never said, well, how much does the shoes cost that you're going to dance in? God don't say that. If God don't say, well, how much does the suit cost? How much did the car cost that brought you here? Money don't impress God. Right. Yet the church has made it more about money than ever before. I know some preachers ain't got nothing else to say but money. That's all it is, money. Stuff, cars, houses, dimes, furs, where you going, where you been. God ain't concerned about that foolishness. Right. It, it's just like somebody that born, raised, and lived in a beach house. Beach house just become the norm. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Right. And for some of us, man, to be on the water for a week, boy, we're just so excited and happy. We can't even imagine going out there every day. Walk the beach. Pray and all that stuff, you know. Y'all ain't going out there with them half naked suits on. <laughs> right? So, but 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 see, here's the thing. Don't, don't there are certain things that some people may have as the norm. Right. Don't don't listen. You're trying to go after something that means nothing to people.
Because that's just the love of the Lord. Mm -hmm. When you get to the place that when God starts being good to you, it's not that I'm chasing stuff. Right. Stuff right. comes. Come on, verse number two. Oh, man. And be not conformed to this world. Yes. Do not define success like the world would. It's not, it's not just, you know, you hit me, I'm going to hit you back. It's not just, I'm getting out of the fight because you shouldn't have said it. No, no, it's bigger than that. Don't ever call happiness how the world defines it. That's right. That's right. You say, well, you know, and you, know thing, you start looking at your bank account to see whether or not you're going to be happy. Mm -hmm. Don't ever allow how much money you got to determine how happy you're going to be. Yeah. 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 I've sat over here and I've had thousands of dollars in my pocket and I've sat over here and I had $17 in my pocket. Amen. Amen. Come on. It don't change my worship. Right. Yeah. Right. It don't change my praise. Right. Yeah. See, the moment the devil can start making you think that God is not in your life, God is not representing in your life, that's the moment now you start shifting your commitment, your dedication to God. Right. Now, let me, let, me, let, me, let me get to some other stuff here. Because I got I to gotta make sure I get through. I'm going to get through something here. I ain't going to get stuck on this. Listen, by the renewing of your mind. To renew the mind says that I now have to get to the place that I'm going to allow God to tell me how I ought to do something. Mm -hmm. If I allow God to tell me, I'm going to know. Amen. If God don't tell me, I'll never know. Right. If God don't speak to my heart, if God don't, the renewing of the mind says I've gotten away from how God wants me to do things. So I gotta have my mind renewed by the, renew by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If you won't get to the place, I'm gonna glorify God. I gotta let God speak to me. God gotta teach me. Yeah. Unteachable people don't grow. Amen. Your relationship won't grow if you're not teachable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My wife and I was uh, we was going to the airport and um, <clears throat> we was getting our luggage and. Um, I grabbed our first suitcase, and I saw another suitcase look just like ours. I put it on there, and, y and Yolanda was saying, is that our suitcase? And I looked at it. I swear, I saw Yolanda Hatcher. I said, I know how to read, Yolanda. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I know how to read. And then and she kept, and, well, they don't look, they ain't the same. They're two different suitcases. Then we go, and this lady come running over. Fee, fee, fee. Get my suitcase. Come on, let, no, 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 let me tell you, let me, let, now here's the thing, here's the thing. We usually have these tabs, right, that we put on. Uh, Mama gave it to us. These tabs we put on our, our suitcases and it says hatchet, right? When we travel, we put those on, we ain't had it. You know, she, she forgot them, so we didn't have one suitcase. So when I grabbed the wrong suitcase, you know immediately what this ever told me? If she'd have had them tags on there, it, it wouldn't have, uh, you wouldn't have had this problem. Right, 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 right. You know what I told the devil? No, if I would have listened, and read the thing right. again, we wouldn't have had this problem. Come on now. Now, I'm going to show you something here. If the devil gets you to keep pushing blame, you'll never be able to change your wrong. That's right. Do you hear me? Yeah. Stop thinking that if you had this. No, no, no. Take ownership, because now you can produce change. Yeah. Come on now. Y'all had it. So I got to renew my mind. God got to be able to speak. When the old you is always going to be on point. I'm going to tell you that. The old you always ready to give his opinion. The old you ready always to jump out the car. Mm -hmm. The old you always telling people pull over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the old you. But if you give God a chance, he'll speak. Yes. Now whether or not you're going to hear it, it's totally different. Mm -hmm. When we start reading scripture, think more spiritual than material when you're studying the Bible. You know how powerful it is? Everything that talks about being better, getting better, having more, we immediately turn into materialistic things. Mm. That's the devil. Y'all yeah. better hear me? Because if I don't get you to change how you see God and know whether your relationship is all on lust or love, you're going to mess up all the days of your life. God is never going to show up because you act the lustful things. So hear, hear what you got to understand. When I hear I'm the head and not the tail, I ain't talking about I got the biggest house. I ain't talking about I got the best car. I ain't talking about how much my... That's not what it is. When people want the devil out of their life, they come hang around me because I'm the head. Now, turn everything spiritual right. before you turn it into materialism. Amen. Right. Amen. Yes. Amen. You'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the field. Yes. 
don't don't call your blessing laced around materialism, because then you start chasing materialism. Right, right, Put your right. tie your blessing into the peace of God, the joy of God, the security of your children's future. There's no parent in their right mind mm -hmm. that don't want their child to have a better outcome than it. Amen. 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 They, we, we, I, mean, I mean, you just in your right mind. You want what's best for them. Right. You know, and listen, listen, when you have spiritual background, now, now, now when I say that, meaning, you know, some of us had grandparents and parents that wasn't as deep and studied and versed as preachers we got today, but what their relationship with God was intact. And you can see growth. And you can give your children a better life than you had. Mm -hmm. right. Now, I'm not talking about materialism. Now, keep in mind, because this is what the devil keeps getting us. If wisdom is more valuable than silver and gold, why do you keep look, comparing the car and the house to how blessed you are? Right. Amen. I told you, you leave your children with wisdom. You leave them with more money than you ever could count. Amen. Amen. Leave them with wisdom. They're secure. See, the devil got us all caught up. Now, I know we ain't jumping and shouting and flipping, but if I don't get this in your life, yeah. all, the, all everything you go through will going to be theatrics. The Bible talks about this. I'm on, let me, I need to read that because I don't think y'all going to hear me. <laughs> y'all listen to that passage just he, you know, he, he probably wants to jump a little loud. No, 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 no. No, let me, let me, I'm going to get to the right verse here. Go, go to, I'm, I'm jumping now, but I got to get you to see this. Go to Matthew 7 and, 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 and 21. Yeah, go ahead. Matthew 7 and 21. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something here. Uh, yeah, let's, let's read that. Let's all read that. I'm going to show you something. Because if you don't get real, the devil starts giving you other stuff to replace what God needs to build up in you. All right? The devil will start making you satisfied because you're a church celebrity. Right. But God don't have nothing to do with you. Stop seeking celebrity status mm -hmm. and start seeking, I want to please God. Mm -hmm. Now, you may please God and nobody never knows, meaning nobody never knows what you got, where you've been, where you're going. Right. Nobody never be, 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 oh, come hang out with us. No, no, no. You may never get that. Mm -hmm. If you're hungry for friends, you may miss God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True, true, true. Let me tell you something. If, if you, if you know what I mean, if you ever get that. You get the discernment of spirits. Be don't be surprised how few friends you have. Amen. Amen. I know you think you want Amen. this gift to know when somebody's lying just when they open their mouth. Mm -hmm. You know. Because mm -hmm. one, you're held responsible if you offend them. Just because you know the truth don't give you the right to offend them. Right. That's true. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and especially when you're talking to your kids. Right. You know, they'll be talking to you. Now, it's not an inkling. Like, you just know. It don't matter whether it's your kid, somebody right. you just met. Right. You just know they're lying. Right. And yet you still got to act like, you know, all is well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um. Now, I'm telling you, it's a difficult thing to deal with a liar. Yes. Sorry to leave on that, because I see some of y'all say, well, let me leave for you. <laughs> Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Come on. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Come on. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you work of iniquity. Mm -hmm. Now, everything that's done in the church don't mean it's glorifying God. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. now, if you get caught up in the wrong thing, because somebody got a gift, now, I said this before, and I, I, you know, it may not apply to many of you, but you, you, got, you got to feel what I'm saying here. God's not interested in what you know. He's interested in more whether you will repeat and do what he tells you. Amen. We got more preachers teaching what they learned from school than what God told them. Go I done went and spent all this time in school, and uh, I'm going to use some of this. But God's I, I didn't ask you to use that. It's good that you know it, but that's not what I asked you for. Don't think because ple people are pleased with you, God is pleased with you. Y'all right. getting upset. That's right. That's right. So, uh, come on, let, 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 me, let me go through this, all the way to 27. Come on. Verse number, number, number. 
Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto him a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Come on. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Come on. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, hear, understand, but refuse to do, shall be likened unto a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. Come on. And the rain descended and the flood came and the wind blew and beat upon that house and it fell. And, the, and great was the fall of it or the ruins of it. Now this is what you got to understand. When you please people and don't please God, you'd be surprised what it take you on. <laughs> See, when a storm comes in your life, tell me who you are in the storm, before the storm, in the storm, and after the storm. I'll tell you everything about who you are in God. Come on. Come on. You can't have a bad day at work, come home and take it out on the people you love the most. Right, right, and talk right. about you're a warrior for God. Right. Come on, yes, right. Don't work like that. Your man can't get you upset and you holler at your kids. That's right. Oh, let me go back there. Let me go back I see some of y'all ready to get up. You better not come up here. <laughs> Listen, so I need you to know I can't look for it to be a celebrity and God not be pleased. Hear me. Hear me when I tell you. Hearing the voice of God means everything. When you hear God's voice and obey it, what I'm saying is go to Isaiah 29, 13. When you hear God's voice and obey it, you got to understand what happens now. No matter what the devil sends your way, you can weather that thing. Amen. That's why we, we, we act based off the word of God, not our situation. You can't, you can't be looking at your money and decide whether you're going to be happy. Sitting up there huffing and puffing and rubbing your head and, oh, what am I going to do? No, 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 no. Listen, there, there are so many people. Oh, God. Let me get through this. Let me get, let me get through this. Wherefore the Lord says, for as much as these people draw nigh, draw near me with their mouth and with their lips, do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me. And their, and their fear toward me, or their reverence toward me, is taught by the precepts of men. Let me tell you something. You cannot allow someone to tell you anything substitute your submission to God. Amen. Now, child, let me tell you something. Now, if you're going, if you're going to be a worshiper for the Lord, you're going to have to go to school and let somebody teach you how to, how to move, move, you know, use your voice. No. That's not, God never sent nobody to music school right. to be a worship. He just said, say it. Mm -hmm. See, you think God hears vocal skills, but God hears what comes from the heart. Right, 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 right. See, if it's not coming from your heart, he don't hear that garbage anyway. Mm -hmm. right. So you may be watching Sunday's best. God said, I don't watch that God. How was it? How do Y'all be saying, oh, child. That she saw anointing, you wouldn't know what the anointing was and it came and kicked you in your behind and stood right behind you. Mm. <laughs> the anointing ain't got nothing to do with entertainment. Right. You know, the, let me tell you something. The purpose of the anointing will tell you whether or not somebody's anointed in the first place. Mm. Mm. The anointing is not for celebrity status. Right. Do you hear me? Yes. The anointing is not to make people feel good about having you over. Right. The anointing is an empowerment that benefits somebody else yes. of the gift and the doings of me. Yes. So when I'm anointed, it ain't, it ain't to get me something. Right. It's to get you something. Right. That's true. Child, you, you ever heard a song when the song stopped? It, uh, it has no impact. You can listen to the song, child, you be all caught up. Especially them love song. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't they dream about somebody that ain't your own? Mm. Mm. And, uh, you I'm you can be married to somebody, they don't even know you're married to them, but, but when that song playing, that be your boo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but when the music stops, you're not going back to reality. Right. Right. <laughs> Anita Baker sang a song years ago. I, I heard these words, and it means something to me. She said, you don't have to prove you're beautiful. That's right. To strange people, people that don't matter, you ain't got to prove that. That's right. To strangers, people that see, here's the thing. Some of y'all want stuff to prove something to people that don't matter. Right. 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 So when you get caught up 
in the in the emotion of things, mm -hmm. you you'd be surprised how the devil have his have his way. You 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 try you trying to grow in God, but people been telling you. Right. You know one of the things the devil did. I'm gonna say this and I'll move on. He got God out, out of some churches. Period. Totally. And they'll never come back because there has been a doctrine in place that God can't come in. Now I'm about to call one. Don't, don't nobody get up talking about something. I knew it. I knew it. Give me the mic. <laughs> God didn't call women preachers. Come on. That foolishness will keep God out of the church. Yes. Now I don't care what you believe, what you want. I'm not here to argue or debate it. All right? If you believe a woman, God can't use a woman, fine. I don't care. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm going to this church anyway. Right. All right? I know some places that they... They, they will tell you a woman can, can preach. I know a place where they say a woman can preach, but she can't pastor. Mm -hmm. I know a place that say a woman can't be a, a bishop or whatever, and all this other stuff because of this, that, and another. And I, I, I don't have, I'm, not, I mean, I'm not here to argue that. What I am saying is, you don't have enough power to tell God who to use and who not. Jesus. Right. Right. Jesus. Amen. So when a church set up a doctrine that say women can't preach in, the, in this, this here pulpit and you can have words. You can have words of exaltation, words of encouragement, but you can't call what you're doing preaching. Uh, that keeps God out of the church. Amen. And, and as long as that doctrine is in the church, God can't come there. Come on now. now that church can have 20,000 members. Right. And God said, I ain't been there since they built it. Right. Right. He said, I came by to see what they were doing. Mm -hmm. But they told me not to come by. <laughs> God don't submit to, to church doctrine. Right. Do you, do you know there are so many things that uh, you know people just don't get? People people want now y'all know I'm free. I don't care what people think about me. I was just uh, less than 48 hours, I guess. We was at the what that the what that place where they smoke that stuff? The hookah, the hookah club. We was at a lounge. They were passing out the crowd. Yeah, man, and I had a good time. My cousin walked, we walk around the hoop club, my cousin got me walk around. It was loud, the music was loud. He said, yeah, this is my cousin. He's a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> the guy said, you a pastor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, now, see, here's the thing. I'm not concerned about somebody seeing me in the hoop club and start talking about something. Oh, my God, he's supposed to be somebody in the boy in there with the bull. <laughs> I didn't smoke the hookah. You understand? <laughs> you know, this I didn't smoke the hookah. But but here's the thing: I'm so free from people. People try to make me feel like I'm against the will of God because I won't submit to what they want me to be. Right. Right. Now I'm, we all family here. I mean, nobody gonna talk about me, so I'm just gonna open up. You know, confess your faults one to another. <laughs> that didn't cuss preachers out. Slap a preacher too. <laughs> now I've done some things. You know what I'm saying? I've done some things that I may, may not be have, be proud of, but I deemed it necessary at the moment. Right. I tell people when church folks get in your business, don't be trying to spiritually talk to them. I tell people, cuss them out. Exactly. Well, I'm getting people ratchet right quick. You be sitting up there talking about you are to love me. Whether he is the baby's daddy or not, your job is to love me. We are Christians. We are sisters, and they will keep on talking about you. But boy, you lay something on them, boy. You lay something on them, boy. You start calling them all kind of emails and all that stuff. You something to see, boy. You say, it don't matter who the daddy is. Your husband is the daddy. <laughs> Child of my eyes going to get big. They ain't gonna, they're going to talk about you, but I tell you one thing. They're going to talk about you to the people somewhere else. See, I know, I know, I got remedies that don't fit the, the church doctrine. But I tell you one thing: people mind their business. They say, "What? Well, excuse me? How you doing, sister? Bless your life. Come here for a second. Come here for a second. I'm going to tell you, they know you been who my, my baby daddy is. Come here, let me talk to you. Even if you be called on the carpet. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Come here, Murray. Come here. Since you're so concerned right. about who all up in me. <laughs> Oh, I'm telling you, 
Andre, you, you ain't need no coat on. When my grandma had that wig, you ain't no coat on. That heavy, thick, black, y'all don't like this wig. That heavy, thick, plastic that be up under that wig. Try to make holes for me. <laughs> you mess around playing with grandma wig if you want to, you be dead over there dehydrated. But you don't smell a lot. I bet you they scratch that wig and, and get on back to church. Now, people always want control. You ain't much of a Christian if you're trying to get somebody to bow to your theology or whether or not God loves them. Right. Right. Try to get them to church with the mic. Is this all you say? Yes, I just want to make a bold announcement. It is true. I don't know who the baby daddy is. But it's one of them deacons over there. Put this exit up here 
So everybody can run this way, that way. And uh, I told him, I said, listen, this is the dominant black church. <laughs> we make those. <laughs> and uh, nobody cares about how old this pussy is. That's right. Right. Child, y'all be looking for pop. He be, hey, you see mama's foot. So we don't have to No, we make those, brother. I'm telling you, this ain't, them, this ain't Hollywood. We don't sit there and just burn. Now, child, we start kicking in with them for this. We gonna make a dough, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, look at, look at the Lord. That wasn't the Lord, you did Tim. I kicked that dough right there. <laughs> now, I never understood that. Like, people be in the room, and the fire come, well, you know it's sheep, bro. Right. Kick right on through the sheep, bro. I don't know what I'm talking about. I didn't never, never want, cross my mind, to do nothing else different. Y'all see, I got a fixed out fire stings up here. Uh -huh. I always had a fire stings up here. Because I don't trust Holden to come get me. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, the fire extinguishers got to be at the back door. Listen, Mr. Inspector, there are extinguishers at the back door. <laughs> but and, the extinguisher don't do no good if ain't nobody coming in and get me ready. <laughs> now, I got my own little extinguisher. I used to have a big one. I don't know what they did with it. So I need another one, one in each hand. And I know how to put a fire out. Y'all just sitting up there and get burnt up. Mm -hmm. I ain't running this here. I keep my, I'm getting up out of here. Right. You get to, listen to me, you get to the place that you start being concerned about being successful, you get ideas on how to get there. Right. I don't know what to do. You'll figure it out. Trust me. Yeah. I believe it's the will of God for you to grow, for you to prosper. Amen. I don't think it's the will of God for people to control you with their ideas yes. and what they think about you. Yes. I will never change or what's wrong and try to make it right. right. But I love you just the way you are. I don't care what you're smoking. I don't care where you're going, who you're dating. I'm going to love you just the way you are. If all of us can have that mindset, God can be God again in the church. Yes. God is not concerned about how much Bible you know more than how well you'll treat other people. Come on. People need to hang around you and feel love. Father, I thank you. Thank you for this day and for what you've done in the lives of the hearers of this word. That we would know that we are in love with you and not being just lusting after what you can provide. Give us more understanding and more wisdom that we can grow and flourish in you. Don't allow the devil to control us through the ideas and precepts of people. We need a word from you. Have your way in us, oh God. We'll forever give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.